Yeah, you're good. Okay, uh, we're going to get back going here now. Uh, a few minutes ago, you heard me talking about fan versus uh, positive displacement blower. And I'm sure some of you guys running into that when you're writing specifications. I don't know uh, what type of machine you want. Uh, they both have a place. Uh, one will perform in a certain situation better than another. I'm, I'm, I'm a neutral guy, so I, I can tell you they both have a place. They both work well. But they've got some things that you need to know about both of them. Uh, I, I want to first I'll start with a centrifugal fan and some of the characteristics of, of it and how it works. I've got a little fan. This, this little uh, shop back here, most shop bags work with centrifugal fan. I've got a little centrifugal fan model here. Uh, I mean, I actually come out of one of these shop bags. Anybody, I'm only got out of the shop bag and reads the technical specifications. Uh, no less the uh, operating instruction, you know. That I needed to know about. This one here does about 200, uh, 200 uh, about uh, uh, it, it do about seven inches of mercury is all it do, but it does about 100, uh, uh, when it's working right, it's not right right now, 100 inches of water will do. Uh, it does about 40 right now. This fan, I'll pass this around if y'all want to look at it, just pass it back, uh, just spray through this thing there, and then take a look at it, you can see how it works, and I'll be explained at the same time. <coughs> The way a centrifugal fan works is it, is it spins, the, the air is, I'm going to use some vernacular, slung out between those veins that you see in there. It, it slings it out and produces a low pressure area in the middle of it. Uh, it, it. There's some curious things that happen with PD blowers and centrifugal fans related to this performance. I want to turn this on a second. I want you to watch what goes on here and hear something. The air is coming in here, blowing down the turbine the balloon. All around. Well, this is it. Can you hear it barely? It's like it's uh, slowed down, speeds up. Uh, a centrifugal fan kind of works backwards, if you will, and that's not the right way to term to use from, from a roots blower. A centrifugal fan takes more horsepower actually sucking air than it does when you restrict the inlet. If uh, those of you that have some trivial fans, you ever notice if you restrict the inlet, how it will start sounding a little different, the engine will speed up? Because as the air thins out, uh, as you produce inches of water, inches of mercury, whatever you want to use to describe it, as the air thins out, it's running in a vacuum, so to speak, so it takes less horsepower to spin that fan in a vacuum. Taking less horsepower, then and you'll hear the engine kind of speed up uh, and, and when you stop it up. So in, in essence, whenever it's doing no work, it takes more horsepower than it does when it is working. A positive displacement blower is just backwards from that. If you ever hear a positive displacement blower when you stop up the suction hose, you hear the truck engine kind of lug down because as the inches of mercury go up, being as positive displacement in the nature of the blower load, it takes more horsepower to continue to turn those. Does that make sense what I'm saying? That's exactly what happens now. Uh, both of them have some things that have to be that you have to be uh, concerned about. I mean, you don't want material going through either of them. Uh, in my son time years ago, people used to say, well, it doesn't hurt a centrifugal fan. Malarkey. It hurts them all. You just don't want material going through. You need to maintain your filtration system. But uh, the centrifugal blower, obviously, if something goes through it, uh, it will uh, mark it. It can cause more damage, uh, particularly because the tolerances are close. I'm going to try to draw a centrifugal, uh, I'm not sorry, a rotary low blower. About it close, I'm gonna get it. If you look inside of a rotary load blower, you see two figure eight impellers. Nowadays, there's a trial load, there'll be three of them. They're not going to go on for figure eight, but there'll be uh, three loads in there. As these loads turn inside of each other, they compress air on one side and it produces, it's compressing over here and it's producing vacuum on this side. And you'll tell you, and we're, we're, we're concerned that we use the vacuum side of the, of the blower. And because uh, uh, we don't want to suck, we don't want to blow it. You'll see the blowers and treatment plants being used as compressors, where they use the compressor side of it. But this, this uh, oh, the way it works, you'll have a gear here and a gear here that time those two loads so they can't hit each other. Does it make sense what I'm saying? It's really hard to do. If they don't hit each other, those timing gears make sure that they don't hit each other and they, and they perform properly. You know how much clearance there is right in between here as those loads cross this load here and there right here? About six thousandths of an inch. About like that paper. That's how close they come. 
And that's why you'll see a, a, a blower, the new ones, go down to 27 inches of mercury because the tolerances are real tight. You, you just can't do that uh, on a centrifugal fan. The tolerances are too loose. But, but the flip side of that, because the tolerances are loose, the centrifugal fan moves more free air. And if you were going to be uh, using a centrifugal fan in a situation where you were sucking grease out of the lift station off the top of the water, the can start would probably work a lot better because it moves more free air if you're sucking it off the top of the water. But if you try to go down in the water, what happens? Well, then you start to start the fan and performance drops off. So then that's where the PD would start to work better. So they both, in that particular application, they would both, I think you need to buy both. I don't think people have to. You need to have one of each, you know. But uh, the problem with the, you have with both of them is, is that you got to watch this, uh, the PD blower when it comes to uh, heat. The new ones, if, if you got the new ones with the, uh, 27 inch floors, they have an uh, injection cooling where it sucks cooling air into the compression cycle to actually cool the back side of the loads. And you can run those at 27 inch mercury contingents. The 15 and 18 inch floors have vacuum breakers, vacuum relief, conco valves. It's just basically a valve that once it reaches 15, 18 inches of mercury, it sucks the spring up with a valve seat on it, lets the air come in. That air is, is, is not cooling air, so it's intended that you can continue to run that machine under continuous duty. It is basically a warning that you're in a low air flow situation, you're not getting air through the blow, the proper amount of air, and, and you need to see why. Now, as you spin that blower up, 1800 RPM, maybe 2000, depending on the blower you have, or the machine that you have, these how close are they coming to each other? Six thousandths of an inch, that's how close those loads are missing each other. Now on the end clearance, like you got the load that's in lengthwise, there's about 12 thousandths on the end because it's really longer in length than it is in greater in diameter, lesser in diameter. In other words, it's about uh, it'd be a 1024, an 824, depending on the size of the floor. Be eight inches in diameter below, 24 inches long. Does that make sense? 824, 1024. So it, it, when it gets hot, it, it grows twice, has much twice the mass to be able to grow. So it grows more in length, so it has 12 thousandths of an inch clearance. Well, what happens whenever you get into low airflow, and you continue to run the machine, or the, uh, say the uh, couple of valves is not working properly. They need to be checked. What happens then? You're not getting any airflow. What happens in the metal when it gets hot? It expands. Once that expands, two things could happen. Either they get so close to each other, clearance is closed, and the loads hit, knock it out of time, it could destroy the floor, or it grows in length enough that it hits a head place on each end, and then once it hits that airplane, it's going to go instantly to about 2,500 degrees, 22 to 2,500, and it melts the metal and it's gone. So you've got you to be aware of that.